Okay, let's get stuck into this pile of shame. Well, God bless some Xbox. Hi, I'm Walker and this is War Amateur, a channel for amateur war gamers. In this video, I'm going to be looking to see how much of my backlog I can clear if given a whole weekend to dedicate to it. Because the stars have aligned, hell has frozen over and pigs are flying, I have the whole weekend to myself. Well, first things first, I need a good breakfast and a big old cup of coffee. So if you've been in this hobby for more than five minutes, you know how it goes. You start buying boxes, that pile of shame keeps building, and before you know it, you've got an entire closet full to the brim of things that are just building your anxiety, knowing that it needs to be built and painted. Uh, and I'm no different. So uh, I've got uh, a couple of commissions on the go, uh, one of which, uh, if you've been following me on Facebook, you'll see I've been painting up uh, a salamander army. Um, I've got like 10 dudes here, a dreadnought and a character, which I've got to about maybe 80, 90% complete. Um, the last 10% is where you tend to really spend a lot of time. Uh, I've got some other things uh, that I need to work through. I'm uh, building a board for Aliens, another glorious day in the core, uh, quite an ambitious project. I've got uh, a mass amount of MDF terrain. So uh, I've got this from TT Combat, several, Buildings there and more and more and more and that's just the TT combat stuff I've also got a bunch of stuff from eBay I've got lights to go in it I've got elements to jazz it up and tie to start with uh, and I want to make a board that's going to be uh, really thematic and interesting to play on for another glorious day in the core but i also want to make it not so specific that it can't be used for kill team or necromunda or maybe even some 40k or some other games or completely other systems uh, then speaking of another glorious day in the core i've just gone ahead and got the ultimate badasses so there's a bunch of miniatures in there uh, i've also got for my own personal salamanders army um, a whole slew of uh, characters uh, and infantry units, which again, I've painted up uh, to a certain point and haven't finished. So that's been annoying me. And then lastly, I've got uh, a couple of kit bashes that I need to do, five uh, other infantry units, which are completely bare plastic that I need to put onto bases. Uh, and layer up and get to the same level as these other guys uh, and that's just the stuff in this uh, you know in this immediate area I've also got uh, a full Leviathan box back in the house uh, and maybe 2,000 other points of Space Marines to paint along with some um, Astro Militarum units so got quite a heavy backlog um, been here in the workspace for a couple of hours now just tidying up um, making a few things neater, putting things away and generally just procrastinating. And it really is time now that I uh, knuckle down and, and get to work. So uh, hop down with me and we'll see what things we can start getting to work on. So first up, I'm trying to level off these bases just a little so that I can go ahead and attach these commissioned salamanders. Uh, these are some really nice resin bases that the uh, customer has purchased to go alongside his minis. Uh, unfortunately, uh, where I'm attaching plastic miniatures to resin bases, I'm going to have to use super glue rather than plastic cement. So the bond isn't going to be quite as good. So I do just want to make sure I've got a lot larger surface area just to help promote the bond. I'm using this HV super glue, so that's high viscosity. It's like a gel super glue. Um, and I find that gives me a little bit extra working time. It doesn't dry as instantaneously as some thin super glues can and it doesn't seep into all the cracks. It has a, a lot more surface tension. As you 
would expect from a high viscosity superglue. Um, so I'm just popping this, this little fella on his base. Uh, he's happy there. And just carry on going through these. Uh, now, as you can see, uh, they're sitting relatively flat, but there's still some voids underneath their feet uh, where, um, you know, there's no material. Uh, so what I'm going to try and do here is use a, a little mixture to help just stick them down a, a little bit more firmly. Uh, and that's going to be using this stuff. The finest Colombian Bam Bam. Oh yeah. So I get the glue onto the miniature and just dip the miniature into the uh, baking powder. Just give it a little twirl around. Get it nice and in there uh, and then blow off any excess. Okay, and with that job out of the way, uh, clean up the mess, and I move on to some Aliens miniatures. So these are the Ultimate Badasses from uh, Another Glorious Day in the Core by Gale Force 9. Teeny tiny little miniatures, uh, but fortunately they don't come in too many parts. So uh, first thing I need to do is go ahead and clip all of them off the sprue. And then once clipped off, uh, start gluing them up. I'm going to glue them onto the base first and then attach the parts. Okay, and next up I have from the Acids and Hassets uh, expansion for the same game is uh, some little face huggers here. Cute little fella. Hey there, little fella. Uh, so I'm just airbrushing these with sh some a shabty bone. I've already sprayed the bases uh, silver, uh, the, uh, the the metalwork there. Um, so I'm just trying to catch as much of it as I can with the airbrush without getting any uh, any overspray onto the base. Okay, and now I'm back onto the commission. Um, so my client has these aggressors, these angry boys, that I've primed up already, and then I'm just going to go over and hit them uh, with almost a complete coat of Boreal Green from Scale 75. I'm going to be angling my airbrush uh, so I catch pretty much everything but the, the, the utmost recesses that I would only be able to get if I actually turn the model upside down. Uh, I'm just going to pretty much cover the, the whole model except for those recesses with this dark green. And then I come back in with scale 75 Irati green. Now this time, uh, this is a, a lot more focused application. Um, I'm going for like the, the middle of the shins, uh, the top of the shoulder pauldrons, the top of the, the helmet, um, and just trying to make sure that I'm, I'm really coming from a top down angle and not getting uh, you know too much of this, eliminating you know the, the previous shade that was underneath. And then the last step was this uh, light livery green from uh, Vallejo. Uh, I normally use the uh, Vallejo model air range, uh, sorry, game air range, because um, I find they're a lot more saturated, exciting colors. Um, but the, the light livery green in the game air range, it just did not want to behave. Uh, so I've got this one from the model uh, range uh, it goes on a little bit better uh, and as you can see this is a very precise application so I'm only applying this in a few spots where it would catch the most light so right on those little tippy toes uh, right on the very edges of his hands uh, the very tip of the the backpack protrusions um, and, and, uh, and the back of the heels there so the absolute most jutty outy bits uh, get this treatment Hey guys, so it was just after lunchtime on day two and I'm done with the airbrush. I've managed to get salamander commission paints all up to the point where I can start brush painting those. I've laid on all my greens. Uh, I've also managed to get them all onto bases and I've managed to build and prime my aliens ultimate badasses from another glorious day in the core. 
Uh, I've managed to get some preliminary colours down on my face huggers, they'll just need a dry brush after. Uh, and I've also started work on my science lab. Um, so they've been painted with some metallics uh, and they'll also be ready for brush painting. Okay, so my goals for the rest of the day is to take some characters that I've had at 90% for a while now and try and get these finished. Uh, a lot of what I've been doing is stuff that uh, is ultimately productive but hasn't necessarily left me with a finished model. Uh, and I feel it's important to get finished models um, on your tabletop just to get you know that real sense of accomplishment and these are pretty close so I feel that that will help motivate me to push on and do some other things then I'm going to do some more work on the commission uh, and I'm also going to try and paint up these uh, cool little conversions that uh, I saw um, on, on Google and decided I just had to rip that off <laughs> Um, and then once we've done there, if there's a little bit of time later, I'm going to try and build some of this MDF. I really want to get stuck in, um, but it is one of those projects that's kind of the lowest priority, but the thing I really want to do the most. So it'd be great just to get a, a little bit of that done later today. So I'll take you down uh, and let's get to work. His character, it's a blade guard captain of some description, I think. Uh, I've had this guy uh, at a you know, a semi-completed stage for quite a long time. Um, put a bit of work into him already, uh, but there's still quite a lot to do. So a lot of this pin washing that you can see me doing here uh, and a lot of highlights uh, and details left to pick out. This guy was actually an eBay salvage, uh, him and a, a few friends of his, um, but the paint wasn't put on too thickly. So uh, that's my favorite scenario. I, I don't like stripping paint. I actually find a lot of the time you end up gacking up the details trying to do that. Um, I, I just like to paint straight over the top of whatever paint job's on there. If the paint job that was on previously is thin enough that I can get away with that, then that's absolutely what I'll do. And I'm just carrying on with the pin wash here. As you can see, uh, just going into the, ax the extreme recesses uh, and trying not to get it uh, onto uh, any uh, of the of the, of the non-recessed areas <laughs> uh, and then what I do is if I do get any on there as you can see me just clean it cleaning up here so I just get a wet brush uh, and wipe that off okay and then decided to move on to this angry boy uh, part of the commission again just doing the bronze bits now so that's mostly going to be the aquila and the flamer area of his uh, fists uh, I'm just going to go on I actually really like this step I'm using uh, Balthazar gold I think it's Balthazar gold from Citadel uh, it's one of their base metallics their layer metallics I find really thin and don't cover at all they're a bit of a pain in the ass to work with but they're base metallics uh, I really really enjoy working with um, so I'm just popping this on now now I'm making your green chest gold and then hitting the barrels of my fire strike servo turrets uh, these aren't last cannons these are the auto cannons yeah uh, I'm just getting some on there too And here we have the banner, the really cool looking banner on the uh, Blade Guard Ancient. So I'm just going to go in, get it in there as well. Careful not to get it on the Aquilas. And then we're back to uh, these are actually part of my army. Uh, I just start to get confused between which ones mine in the commission. Um, my, my client just saw uh, what I was posting up on Facebook. He said, That, I want that. And I was like, okay. Uh, so these are some aggressors that, again, I've had at a relatively semi-complete stage for quite a while. Uh, I thought these would be a good thing to try and move along. Um, as you can see, they've kind of done the pin washing on the lower half, but not the upper half. 
and they're all missing details so I'm just going around doing the metallics I, uh, I got the bronze as I was doing the bronze from the other minis and I'm just going in now with some lead belcher uh, and just picking out all the bits on the bolter And here's another guy I've been working on. So it's a Primaris Chaplin this time. And uh, my least favorite stage is the decals. I'm using some Microsol here to soften. I've already applied the decal to his shoulder. It's not conforming because it's a really big lump of transfer sheet uh, that is flat. It does not want to be round. So I'm going to put this Microsol on and uh, see if we can get that to soften up and conform to the rest of the shoulder now i don't actually show it here but i have to go back to this several times i have to let that let it dry a little uh, let it soften reapply um, and that took quite a while and then coming in and we're going to do some of the bone features now on this blade guard ancient and some of my other dudes i think this is the blade guard ancient no this is the blade guard captain um yeah the bone features of which there are a lot uh, i've already gone over with i think a shabti bone um, going highlights now with screaming skull and just feathering those into this guy's rib cage I don't know if it's just because I uh, actually started the hobby collecting Space Marines, uh, sorry, Space Wolves, and the fact that there's a lot of skulls and uh, doodads on, on their armor, but uh, I really love painting bone. Um, don't think I'm particularly the best at it, it's just I find the, uh, the colors that Games Workshop make really lend themselves well to getting a, a really nice effect uh, on bone, and it's, uh, it's probably one of my more, more enjoyable things to paint uh, and then as we move on now I'm just going to start painting up this guy's cloak I'm working on all the leather areas um, so I think I've gone over this with some Rhinox hide and then shaded it down with some Nuln oil uh, oh, and then we're going back in with the Shabti bone and uh, we're going to do the purity seals I think I'm probably showing this footage out of order um, so yeah, my superior editing skills on show here, um, but uh, I'm not going to change it now. So hey ho. Um, so yeah, just picking out the edges and the uh, raised edges of the creases here. This guy has a million <laughs> purity seals, so that was a lot of fun. And now we're coming in and doing some black highlights and obviously boy black highlights what I mean is I'm highlighting the black with some greys doing the bolter on that inceptor before now I'm coming back on this chaplain and just trying to catch some of the edges on this guy I'm not going to try and paint absolutely every raised surface or every hard edge just the ones that are easiest to get to um, and there's quite a few on this chaplain These can be tricky sometimes, trying to paint around the outside rims of the heels. As, uh, it can be hard to employ the uh, side of the brush technique. I'm soldering on here though. Um, I think I, I did make a mistake at one point, so I just had to go back in and clean that up. Get a nice thin line on that dome section there. And then come back in and finish off one of the other aggressors some light grey on his black bolter paint job and that's about as far as I got although the original premise was that I'd have the whole weekend to work on these projects <laughs> life gets in the way as it always does uh, and I had to stop for various things uh, uh, as you can see I didn't actually get anything completely painted within the allotted time um, and that was because I was spreading my efforts over multiple things so that's not to say that it wasn't productive uh, I got lots done and certainly there are things uh, that I'll be able to finish more quickly because of the work I got started this weekend uh, but in terms of actual models finish ready to play with um, 
didn't manage to get anything done. So I did come back the following night uh, just to make sure uh, I did have something to show for uh, my efforts. Uh, there's two characters and a unit of three guys. Um, so they're now ready to play with. Also managed to do the facehuggers from the Aliens games and some of the terrain pieces from the Aliens games. I couldn't have finished those even if I wanted to as I'm waiting for some UV resin and a UV torch. Um, there'll be more about that on my channel at a later point. Uh, there was also lots of other miniatures that I did a few bits of painting on. Um, and there was the commission that I managed to get based, primed and shaded up. Um, so it was a, a relatively productive weekend and you know if I'd have chosen to concentrate my efforts on any one thing I probably would have got you know that thing done um, but I like to work on several different things you know if you just have one project going and you procrastinate on that then you potentially end up doing nothing whereas if I get bored of something I can procrastinate on that on another project um, so there's lots of you know bits and bobs I've been doing uh, and that should all help me you know further down the line get things done more quickly on those uh, so here's a look at some of the things that I finished okay and here is the finished Okay, and here is the finished chaplain. Uh, I've put him onto one of the bases that fits the rest of my army. Uh, if you like these, uh, I'll be doing a video on how I do these bases uh, at a later time. Um, it's probably not the best model in my army, as I would have spent a bit longer usually, but the, the aim here was just to get something done. Um, and then there's the Inceptors, really happy with these guys again, these are on uh, my, my bases again. Really like the way the orange contrasts uh, with the, the bright green armour, uh, they look really cool, can't wait to get those on the tabletop. Here's the Facehuggers, who I painted up for the Aliens game, uh, as you can see I did actually end up getting a bit of overspray onto the metallic bases, so I'll probably end up going over and correcting that with a brush at a later time. Uh, but a quick wash and a few simple highlights and they'll be ready to game with. And after building the ultimate badasses from the Aliens game, I managed to get them all primed. I can see a couple of little green areas actually, so I think I might have to go in and just fix those up. But those are ready for the painting table. And then we have the sentry guns. Uh, so these have just been painted metallic. They'll get a few simple bits of green uh, highlights put on uh, and then they'll be done. And here's some desks from the Hanley's Hope uh, website. Um, these are really cool. They're so detailed, these little resin desks. Um, I've got the base metallics down. I uh, can't wait to get to work on these and those little microscopes and, and get these all painted up too. Okay, and here are the stasis tubes for some other facehuggers that came with that set. I uh, haven't done anything else with these yet because I'm going to be filling these with some UV resin. Uh, I'm not entirely sure how that's going to go. Uh, if it works, maybe I'll make a video on it. Uh, but yeah, a little apprehensive about that because it'll be my first time using UV resin, but we will find out. Okay, and here's some heavy intercessors uh, that I've painted up as part of the commission um, so these have got all of their green shading on and some metallic areas they just need uh, the other details to be picked out uh, and then shading and highlighting and then the same for these two angry boys and the captain uh, that red cape came out really nice I'm really happy with that I'll put a little scratchy scratchy effect on there to uh, kind of simulate the material on there and I think that'll that'll look that'll look pretty good I'm nearing the end of that commission now and then here's something else I've been working on so I managed to get these built primed uh, and painted up just with the basic colors they still need details washes and highlights uh, I can't take all the credit for this though I did see this image on Google somewhere apologies I can't remember where I'm unable to credit it properly but uh, yeah, it's a fire strike turret on a sentinel base I think these look really cool and that's everything thank you for sticking around to the end of the video it means a great deal to me I do hope you enjoyed it 
I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.